It's time now for the weigh-in. So what do I want to talk about today? Well, a couple of things, but I want to focus in first for the weigh-in on a debate that I saw materializing a little bit after the fights were over on Saturday night. And that was, what can you say about the resume of Dustin Poirier? Now, everybody knows the dynamic that we typically have in fight sports, where unless you have this sort of Floyd, even like Floyd Mayweather's record, you can make some, you can make criticisms of every resume, but the point being is, people will overemphasize the significance of many losses. Now, you can't discount a fighter's losses. You can't ignore them. You can't, it's part of their story. It's part of their story. But I noticed that people were trying to undermine the win of Dustin Poirier by saying, well, look, this guy lost to Michael Johnson in 2016. This guy lost to blah, 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 blah. I mean, how good is he really? And I thought that was one of the most insane things I think I'd ever seen. It truly, truly insane. Look, the reality is you can nitpick any resume. You can go back to any kind of resume if you want, and you can say, well, what? how good was it then? You know, what does it mean to have a win over Jonathan Brookins, who was a good fighter at the time, but look back on it, what do fans know about that now? What do they know about wins over, you know, pick the, some of the various guys who may not be competing at a high level anymore? and then go back and discount it. At the time, they, they, they mattered a lot. You know, in fact, Max Holloway has a loss to Dustin Poirier. How much do you really want to hold that against him? You don't hear nearly as much chirping about that. But the point stands that you get a lot of this. And it's part of the fight game. People may have allegiances to Eddie, or they may just be, um, they may overstate things, even in good faith, right? But there's a lot of bad faith out there, too. There's a lot of people, and look, I've been negative. This comes as no surprise to you. I have been negative at times myself. I have gotten things wrong myself. Everyone can be prone to it at times, but you have to acknowledge it, and you have to, to the extent possible, you have to be aware of it. So the point being is, even for an undefeated resume like Mayweather's in boxing, you can still say, well, you know, he fought Pacquiao post-prime, and he fought Cotto post-prime, and he fought Canelo pre-prime and you can go down to that last chapter and you can say a lot of that about a lot of the other fights he had Victor Ortiz and even the Maidana fights to an extent these, these were all sort of like hand-picked to make himself uh, look a little good so it might be an undefeated resume but there are asterisks here or there and I don't present to you that Dustin Poirier's resume is perfect I do not present to you that it is above reproach I do not present to you the idea that I don't know you can't make some noteworthy criticisms of some of the downsides. Uh, you know, you can praise the upsides and you can note the downsides as well. All of that is part of a bigger picture. Um, and so in many senses, right, any MMA fighter's resume is a bit like a Rorschach test. You guys know what a Rorschach test is? Even if you don't know what a Rorschach test is, you might know the character Rorschach from, what was that comic book movie that was really bad in the end? The character Rorschach. But the point being is a Rorschach test, you'll get these uh, almost like mirror-like images. It'll be a flat one, but it'll be the same on the left as it is the right. It'll be like the mirror image of itself. And like the psychologist will ask you what you see. And some people will see a butterfly. Some people will see a horse. Some people will see, it doesn't have to be animals, smoke, a tree, a forest people and a lot of people will have different answers for what they see in other words the Rorschach test is depending on the nature of what you say they can make some determinations about your mental state or a way in which you see the world but there isn't actually necessarily one thing on there and right so a lot of guys will have fairly middling resumes you can praise certain parts of it if you want to emphasize that you can you can you can you can magnify some of the negative parts too if you want to do that as well right um and a lot of guys fit into that Rorschach test segment, but not Dustin Poirier, right? You do not get to look at his resume and say, I can say as many negative things as I want to say positive things. I can make of this what I want to make of this. We can quibble at the margins if you want, right? Fine. And we can acknowledge the losses if you want. Fine. I'm not hiding from any of those. But if you came out of Saturday and your response to that resume, 24 and 5, and the five losses all happened inside Zufa organizations, 
Most, the majority of which, by the way, were at featherweight. If you came out of that Saturday and your response is, eh, you're not that good. Eh, this, this is the guy that lost to Michael Johnson in 2016. Then you're failing the litmus test, not the Rorschach test, right? And the litmus test is either you get it or you don't. I've never seen, not never, but rarely do you find better litmus tests than the Dustin Poirier resume to unearth the overly critical, right? They have outed themselves as a consequence of this loss, right? If the response after Saturday is, yeah, but this is the guy that lost to Cub Swanson back in the day. This is the guy that lost to Chan Sung Jung at featherweight. This is the guy that lost to Conor McGregor like that. This is the guy that lost to Michael Johnson, however when. I'm not hiding from any of those facts. To me, they help also make sense of the larger resume. But if that's the thing you focus on, if that's the thing you're paying attention to, then you are failing the litmus test of, frankly, not only decency, but you are erasing your name off the roll call of people to take seriously forever. That is what you are doing. You are letting the world know this is something you just cannot be relied upon to have a fair opinion on, right? I acknowledge that he has those losses to Swanson, um, to Michael Johnson, to McGregor. I don't think that featherweight was necessarily the best weight class for him, but he has losses at lightweight too. But I also feel like when you go back and you look at those losses, which you begin to get a sense of, by the way, his first loss ever was against Danny Castillo. Does anyone want to say Danny Castillo is currently better than Dustin Poirier or even had a better MMA career than Dustin Poirier? Mm -mm. No, you don't. Uh, and certainly Cub Swanson is a fantastic talent, but they're not even in the same division anymore. Conor McGregor, hey, it's Conor McGregor. That loss counts, right? But that was also, I don't think it is optimal weight class. And the Michael Johnson one, look, you fight enough tough guys, you're going to come up short sometimes. And that's what he's done. But I think this last chapter, still less than 30 years old, you look at his resume, you look at what he's done, and yes, you take into account those losses, but he's not just beating the guys who were sort of mid-tier uh, card fillers, the Diego Fajeda guys. No, no, no. In his last three fights, he's beaten three former champs, and he stopped all three. He stopped all three. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a guy who was always good and is getting incrementally better on the job to the point now where he is clearly championship material. I don't know if he's going to get a title shot. I don't know when. And even if he does, I don't know if he's going to win. MMA is just too hard to predict. But he's got 16 UFC wins, 11 by way of stoppage. He is literally an all-time great UFC lightweight. Certainly one of the best to never hold a title. This is shark-infested waters. I would argue that the, uh, the lightweight division is the best in all of mixed martial arts, certainly inside the UFC. It is the, it is the weight class of kings, and he is sitting down kings fight after fight. If you came out of Saturday and your response is, that's the guy that lost to Michael Johnson, and, and that, look, that's a clear win for Michael Johnson. I do not take that away from him. That adds to his resume. But if that's the thing you focus on, that's, the, that's, that's your big takeaway from Saturday? You are failing the litmus test. You are, you are categorically putting yourself in a place to say, do not pay attention to, to the, the opinion that I hold because it cannot be trusted. It cannot be taken seriously. Dustin Poirier is on a path to greatness. He is not shopworn. He is still relatively youthful and he is the best he's ever been. These guys are not static creatures. The good ones get better over time. They get more mature over time. They get smarter as a competitor over time, and their achievements get more meaningful over time. That is exactly what you have with him. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the weigh-in.